Ah, welcome back YouTubers. Guess what? Today I have a box. One of the most frustrating things over the last little while has been soldering up packs. It's okay when you're soldering small packs, but when you start soldering large packs and quite a few of them, it's such a long and tiring process that it's just so frustrating and so boring that it's hard to even think about going out there picking up the soldering iron and soldering things together. Just because the amount of time it takes to solder a large pack together. When I was soldering some small packs together, just did that in the last few weeks, it was okay. Solder the pack, half an hour later, get the next pack. You can kind of see the process, you know, the progress that it's been finished, you're on to your next pack, that's finished, you're on to your next one. However, when you're soldering large packs, you can spend an hour, if not longer, soldering just one pack or one side of that pack. And it is so annoying and so frustrating. So there had to be a better way. There had to be a faster way. And after watching a whole bunch of YouTube videos, there certainly is a faster way. So what I ended up doing was in the last or well, two weeks ago, I purchased a spot welder. I did a whole bunch of research. I watched HB Powerwall's videos. Some of his were quite funny um, on the spot welder and which one I should possibly get. I also watched some other YouTubers videos that are doing power walls and um, came up with, well after doing a whole bunch of research, came up with one of the, pretty much exactly the same one as some of the other guys use. So what I'll do guys is, now we've just been looking at the box and listening to me talk for the last minute or so, let's open the box up, let's have a quick look at what you get, and would I recommend something like this? Absolutely. If, you, if, you're, char or if you're having to solder up a large amount of cells, then a spot welder for $200 or whatever it is, is definitely worth it versus the time. Remember that about a year ago or eight months or so ago, I soldered up my cells for 10 kilowatt hours of um, battery storage and using 18650s. And one of the things is, is that it takes such a long time to solder up all those packs. And now just doing it again in the last couple of weeks, it's really brought my um, thoughts back to how painful it was when I did it the first time. So. That's what's kind of um, urged me to go out and um, get a spot welder. Um, okay, so we end up with some manuals. And what's in this? We'll quickly open this box. A bunch of packing. Packing is good. You get one long cable. It's got one of these in it, which is good. Put that aside. That's what we're going to be using all the time. There's nothing in that. This is... Oh, that's quite handy. Goes to a New Zealand plug. I wonder if they knew that I was in New Zealand. Uh, so it's a, obviously a Chinese to New Zealand adapter. So that's quite handy. These things are actually... Some of them are not very good. A lot. Some of these are just... Um, the, the, the pins don't connect properly and they just wobble and it's just unsafe. So hopefully this is a good one. Um, you also get... But wait, there's more. You also get... This. Which I don't know what this is. 5 volts made in China, 5 watts. I'm guessing it's something to do with the solar station. Because with this you get... Oh no. It looks like... What is this? What is this? I don't know how to read Chinese. Or Japanese or whatever it is. Um, oh, it's like a little mini grinder. That's pretty cool. Um, pretty cool. That's what... Yeah, it's a tiny little... Oh, it's a spinning wheel. There we go. So yeah, it's a little grinder. Um, okay, that might be good. Um, get your cell and you, you grind a little bit off if it's, um, if it's got some um, things in the way before you um, need to spot weld it. And another plate. So I'm guessing it's just a cheap little motor with a little uh, thing on it, which is interesting. I'll put that aside. Don't need that. What have we got here? So we've got a little soldering iron. That's pretty cool. Not too sure. The quality actually feels pretty good. Nice rubber kind of end. Um, yeah, okay. I don't really need another soldering iron, but that's good. Uh, might be handy, really, to just have there. Anyway, moving on. Um, 
so you get well, this is the solder holder or the soldering um, holder I think so we don't need to unwrap that I don't know what that means this is uh, quickly get into this so this is the foot pedal uh, I don't know how this exactly works it just reminds me of like an old sewing machine uh, but I'm guessing it means you push this down before you put the spot weld on I can take it a guess if that's what happens foot switch this is actually a 240 volt 10 amp so do, do they really just put the whole power AC power through that interesting anyway uh, very interesting and of course this is the other oh no this is the soldering part um, the soldering stand some fuses looks like some more tips for the uh, the spot welder itself and yeah fuses cool so we'll just quickly throw this stuff back into the box and then we'll have a look at the the good stuff and of course how do we get this box out without damaging the table I thought I'd do this on the kitchen table because it was actually the most clear um, space at the time put that there some more bubble wrap Oh, bubble wrap um, I was just checking that there was nothing else in there bubble wrap it's so the last thing you want to do is throw something away that you need so it's a good idea when you're actually unpacking something just put everything back in the box and then keep the box with the packing for like a month so that way you know that you do have everything you need out of the box and that something wasn't hidden sellotape somewhere that you actually needed before you throw it away so I love how they write it all in Chinese and you're never going to understand Chinese unless you're Chinese of course or well, unless you've multi language oh, well. well that doesn't sound too good tell you what I'm going to have to open it before Now it stopped rattling. Yay! Now I've got, I've got a feeling I'm going to have to open that and figure out what on earth was banging along inside because I'd hate to um, plug it in and then find out that whatever was banging around in there was um, needed. So anyway, let's have a quick look at the front of it. So this is the 709 AD. It's one of the units that everyone is recommending to use. Uh, it's, I think it's 2.2 kilowatt or 1.9 kilowatt or something like that. Some of them they look exactly the same, but they some sites read that it's 1.2 or 2.2 when others say it's 1.9. So I don't know, but it was the highest one I could get. So yeah, it looks really good. One thing I'm going to fit a uh, check after watching HB Power Walls one is making sure that these connectors go in here nice and tight. Which in fact they don't go into the top of the front of this on this one, which is interesting. They don't actually screw in there unless you've got to unscrew something. These just go straight into the bottom, which is a very tight fit by the feel of that. Unless there's something you change up here to make it slot in, because if you look at HP Power Walls one, they plugged into the front of this. So, yep, yeah, okay. Um, so. What we'll do is we'll quickly grab a screwdriver and we'll just unscrew that and figure out what was jumping around. Okay. Huh. Wow. <laughs> I'll just bring the camera in a bit closer. So. <laughs> The thing that was banging along was guess what? The fan blade. <laughs> well that's what you call quality, eh? Absolute quality this. That's just a foot, that's a rubber foot for the bottom. So it's just popped off. They use really good quality fans. Not. 
Um, okay, so wires, so just, yep, looks fine. Hopefully someone will be able to tell me if this looks like the same size as the one they've got in their one. Which is the, the AD version to make sure that it is, it looks slightly smaller than the ones on the, some of the videos I've seen for the, the AD uh, one. So hopefully someone can tell me if it looks like their one. Everything else around here looks fine. A little spring. Some other bits and pieces. Everything looks pretty tidy apart from the definitely the um, transformer looks pretty solid there. No damage really. Uh, I do wonder whether we can just push that back in again. Um, or whether it's just going to keep falling out. Or maybe it just wasn't pushed in in the first place, but really I doubt that. Let's just try it. Yeah, so... Well, it, does, it does seem to hold itself in there pretty well. Oh, there we go, it pops out. So I don't know if it's, it's just held in there by its magnets. Kind of feels like it. I guess we won't really know until we turn it on and if it just spins around and does nothing or whether it spins off. So of course we will test that. So now let's, um, I'll put this back on the stand. Now that we've found our, our issue with it being all floppy and banging along inside. You never want anything floppy. So let's plug it in eh? and let's um, see if it blows up. Right guys, so had a bit of a play, turns it on, it does work. I'm not going to go through all the settings and bits and pieces. Other YouTubers have done much better videos on that, so I'll just keep this very short. Pretty much, get your nickel strip, you stick it on top of your cell, and you choose your power setting. From what I've found is that 6.5 works quite well for the thinner nickel um, strip. And uh, if you don't drop it while you're looking where your foot is, um, it's not too bad. So, if I put that on there, it's a good idea to wear goggles or something like that. And it sticks. So, the thin, a thinner nickel strip with uh, six and a half and the first two of these buttons clicks, and so number four and number six um, pulses, it sticks pretty much first time. No issues at all. Um, I might just try that one more time. Um, I'm still trying to get my head around how this little thing here works. And uh, I keep dropping it. So the problem I might, I think that we'll have is it's hard to know how well they're stuck when you've got multiple cells within a pack. Like it's easy to tell if it's stuck when you're just doing a single cell. Hang on. When you're just doing a single cell. But because if, because they're going to be in a stuck side by side in a pack, it's hard to know. Uh, well, you can just pull the metal and say, okay, that's stuck, cool. But when they're side by side and you've got the plastic clips around them, then how easy is it to be able to twist the cell and find out of whether that's actually the nickel strip is actually stuck to the top of the cell? I think that's going to be the only big problem with this. Uh, I have tested this with the thicker nickel strip. I can, I, it's not, I can't get the consistency right, I can't get it always sticking. So I'm going to have to play around. But um, bit of a, that's a bit of a conclusion to the video anyway. So thanks again for watching guys, I'll see you on the next video.